powered by Patreon. And sometimes, Beth. Hello and welcome, I'm Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. If you're new to this channel, I normally make magic content, but I play a lot of League of Legends and I like card games, and this is Legends of Runeterra. If you don't know what this is, this is the new card game that's gone into beta today. Open beta, so we can all play it now. And it's it's Riot Games' answer to Hearthstone or Arena. It's a new card game based upon the intellectual property of League of Legends. Now, some of my viewers who might be checking out this out for the first time might be Dota fans. And if you get a comment in the comment section being like, but I prefer Dota Vince. Well, maybe one day, just one day, you'll get your own collectible or trading card game. <laughs> So it's day one, and well, I did a bit of googling and everyone seems to hate the Shadow Isles. Uh, for those that don't know how the game works is there are different regions. The regions are like the colours in Magic. We have Damasia, Freljord, Ionia, Noxus, Piltover and Zorn and Shadow Isles. Shadow Isles are sort of like a mix of Cthulhu inspired stuff and ghosts and all that sort of nonsense. And basically, the main reason everyone seems to hate Shadow Isles is that Elise is from there. And Elise seems to be perhaps the cheapest good deck in the game, or at least that's what everyone's saying. The only reason I gravitated towards Elise was because it was the deck that I played in the beta, because it's a token strategy and she reminds me of Brimaz from Magic. She's a 2-3 two, for 2 that attacks, can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, and she summons a spider when she does so. If you have three or more spiders in the battlefield at the end of your turn, she flips, she transforms. I'm actually not quite sure what the term is. Levels up into a big fucking spider. Oh, trigger warning, by the way. If you're not into spiders, <laughs> this is a bad video for you. That said, the art on these spiders don't really give me the heebie-jeebies. I'm not a big fan of spiders because they just don't look like real spiders, do they? They look more like, I don't know, like transformers. <laughs> So, as much as I'm enjoying this game, the deck building tool is actually a bit shite. So, it's very hard to actually show you a, a, like a fanned out version of the deck. I might have to make a, a visual here, or if I'm feeling lazy, I won't. He didn't. So, keep in mind, this deck is relatively budget. I have constructed some things for it using the starter bundle uh, that I bought into. But, like, for example, I might play a second copy of Vladimir if I get one, but I didn't want to spend a wild card on him yet. I'll actually go into how you can construct things later down the line in this game in another video if this proves popular. So our deck has three copies of Hapless Aristocrat. This is a 1-1 one, one for 1 that when it dies it creates a Spiderling, which is a 1-1 one, one for 1. It's kind of like Doom Traveler in a way, except the tribe is relevant now instead of having to wait 5 years for the next Innistrad block to make spirits relevant. Precious Pet is a 2-1 one for 1 that has Fearsome. Again, can't be blocked by creatures of 3 power or less. So essentially, because all creatures have got haste in this game, this is a very good threat early on because you start to start getting in for damage. Also, the Spider tribe is relevant. Then we have three copies of Arachnoid Horror. This is a 2 mana 3 to the art is just something else that's probably the most hideous of all the spiders in a like a really cool way look at this goo dripping towards the camera sometimes with this and the animations for like darius when he grabs you with his hook when he enters the battlefield i do think this game would actually benefit from being played in 3d at least once or twice then you get bored of the gimmick it's a 3-2 with fearsome so again it's a two mana fast threat that can get in under bigger enemies Three copies of Black Spear. If an ally died this round, deal three damage to an enemy unit. It's basically a way of us sort of aristocrating our opponents out when we're sacking our own stuff or throwing our stuff under the bus and getting value out of it, like with Hapless Aristocrats. And it's just a solid removal spell as well. I'm obviously learning this, so I might be wrong, but I can't seem to find any better removal spells in these colours. I mean, I was playing Blade's Edge at one point, but one mana for one damage just seems like a terrible rate. Then we have the titular release that we've already talked about. Then we have Glimpse from Beyond, which allows us to sack a creature to draw two cards. So we can do that after blocks to get some value. Two house spiders. They're two twos for two. That when they come into play, they make a one one. Pretty good rate. It's like a blade splicer almost. Vile Feast is two mana for one damage. And it makes a one one. But that one damage is a drain. So you gain life off it as well. It's a pseudo removal spell. that helps you to finish off creatures and make more spiders. Arachnoid Sentry is a three two for three. That stuns your opponent creature for a turn basically taps them they can't attack or block that turn culling strike is three mana destroy target creature three power or less again removal isn't that good in in rune terror compared to what we see in current even standard magic nothing compared to modern and legacy so this is the best removal for instance skill is a three mana three three with fearsome and when it enters the battlefield it pumps all your spiders for the turn plus one plus zero and shrinks all their spiders for the turn minus one minus zero and again i'm not really into spiders but this art 
Look at this poor fucking sod. There's a really cool motif that tells all the story about Elise, by the way. That we've got, like, the aristocrat up here. Like, with how was aristocrat? You actually see that Hapless Aristocrat was, was lured into this den by a leash and then she transformed into a spider and fucked him up. And he appears, or at least him and his, his ilk, appear in the art of other cards. Just like uh, the one I just showed you. Where the fuck did it go? You got Arachnoid Sentry. Arachnoid? Arachnoid Sentry. There's another one mentioning the Hapless Aristocrat looking for a leash and the spider catching him. And once again we have roses in the art for a Frenzied Skidder. It's pretty fucking good. I like the fact that they're using card art and flavour text to tell a story. There's been leaps and bounds been made with League of Legends and the whole entire like world to A, bring a cohesive aesthetic to it because before it looked like a fucking hot mess and B, just to flesh out the world, especially with the current stories around like Lux and Silas and all that sort of stuff. So the fact that the card game's adding to that, yeah, I'm into it. Finishing off the death deck, we've got Fresh Offerings, which is a three mana spell that makes us a 6-6 six, six if we have three allies die this turn. Basically, this is... Not that good a card in my opinion, and I've been tempted to take it out, but there is a card called Avalanche, which is a huge fucking wrath, so sometimes we need some way to come back from that, or just to make a big, big board in the late game to get through and kill our opponent. Noxian Guillotine is our best card for killing Brahms and Garens that regenerate. Those cards are fucking annoying, and it also resets, so later on in the game, you can get, with some charge up mana in your mana pool, you can get two or three uh, removal spells out of this card. Arachnoid Host is a five mana, five three that pumps through your team, indefinitely with plus two plus zero and like i said look there he is again what a fucking idiot what i like to think is these are different iterations different parts parts in time and this guy just keeps coming back for more he's like maybe she won't be a vicious spider monster this time lastly we have a vladimir now vladimir is a weird inclusion uh, i'm basically playing because i wanted him for a quest and i got the quest done but then they actually end up being pretty good when he attacks along with other creatures he pings them all for one and then pings the enemy nexus their life total for one as well this is very bad with all the x111 skittering spiders we have but if we have the three twos in play with fear or we've pumped the spiders we can attack and also if we're in the end throws of the game losing our one ones to ping them for one basically makes them unblockable for that turn if we're just trying to finish them off it's kind of like hell rider uh, we're we're still on the Innistrad theme for some Well, in Spiders and Vampires, we're talking a lot about Innistrad cards for some reason. But it's kind of like Hell Void up and damage our creatures. But he can also flip himself into a 6 6 with regeneration um, when, when, when he's seen six allies survive damage. So he's got a bit more of an upside beyond that. But ultimately, I don't know if this is good here, but I'm playing it as a, like a powerhouse 5 drop. I mean, what he has done is just come down and trade with a Garen. And then lastly, Brood Awakening, which is one of the best cards in the deck. Six mana, make three spiderlings, leave all your spider allies plus one plus zero indefinitely. Yep, it's a pretty good way to just flood out the board and crash into our opponent and kill. And that's the deck. Let's play some fucking Runeterra. We're currently Bronze 5. This is the second league up. I've already ground my way through Iron today while I was practicing and playing games and learning the game. I only got like... Maybe a dozen games in, in the first, second day of beta when I got introduced to the game. So I'm relatively fresh to it as well. So I might be making mistakes alongside, uh, well, you watching at home. We've got a mirror match here. We're playing against Elise and Trindamir. Another one. There we go. We get to see Braum, Elise, and Trindamir. Braum's quite popular. Elise is quite popular. And Trindamir is a very good finisher. That man's an imposter. That man is the imposter. We need some low CMC cards to start the game with. These are okay. I'm going to replace my glimpse with something and keep the culling strike so we can kill Braum. Or an opposing at least for them. Drawing Brood Awakening suck, but we drew a 1-1 on the first turn, so maybe it's better to be lucky than good. This Omen Hawk, when it comes to play, buffs the two allies on top of your deck that you'll draw next. In Rune Terror, unlike Magic, we both get mana each turn. We're currently in our opponent's attacking turn, so they get to attack this turn. We both get to deploy a one mana threat, though. My one mana threat replaces itself with a Spider Link, so if our opponent attacks, I will happily snap block. They didn't attack to trade off. We drew a Vladimir. I'm going to play this awesome horror, hideous horror, or acting horror, whatever the fuck it's called. Our opponent plays an Elise. Attacking with our 1-1 means it will die to Elise. Meanwhile, attacking with this, they cannot block. So we get in for three. Next turn, I'm going to kill their Elise. Now, on their attacking turn on round three, they can just slam into combat to avoid us being able to interact with them. But I think they're going to deploy a threat first, let's be honest. They did. They deployed a Brahm. Now we've got to choose where this Culling Strike is going to go. I don't think this is going to be that bad. This at least. They don't have any other spiders in play. Brahm, on the other hand, will just... It'll block a load of shit, transform, and then make big old 3-3s three every time we hit it, which is fucking annoying. On the other side, they can't really attack into our spider. 
because we could block it with our three two and kill it. They are gonna swing in. I forgot. I didn't deploy a threat there thinking they couldn't do what I just said. Turns out they can because they've got Challenger on Braum. What that means is that they can attack and drag a creature in to block it. So my 3-2 has to attack it. Kind of like Lur in Magic of the Gathering. Yeah, I, I kind of messed up here. But I'm going to kill their Elise. Lock the spot of my 1-1 one, one, and let my 3-2 buff their, their Braum. Braum's got regeneration so this damage won't stay on him like it does to the other creatures. Similar to Hearthstone, damage stays on. Braum will regenerate now and heal. What a swole motherfucker. We draw a fearsome pet. They can't block that Braum because he's got zero power. We're going to play Elise. We're going to play a precious pet. We're going to attack. If they have removal for our Elise, we'll be very sad. If they don't, then we're going to we're gonna get quite far ahead. Kill the Hawk and revive it. Doesn't seem like the best thing in the world. It does mean they can block my Elise with that 3-3. Three, three. If we attack, we'll lose a body and Elise won't flip. So I'm going to end the round and not attack. Elise flips in their turn and transforms. Into a thick spider queen. Looks like a transformer. <laughs> when she transforms, she buffs all your spiders. They now have... She's a 4-3, so she's stronger. She also has uh, Fearsome and Challenger. But she gives all your other creatures Fearsome and Challenger. Which allows you to basically decide who blocks where. It's kind of like Odric. It's like Brimaz meets Odric. Weirdly, mechanically, it feels a lot like white magic cards. But obviously, flavorfully, being a, a Black Widow creature, she would definitely not be a white creature in magic. They're shooting dead one of my spiders and attacking. I'm going to let that happen. Post combat. And we're playing Arachnid Host, which is going to buff our team. They're going to buff their Braum. He can now block our things, frustratingly. But our smaller creatures can grab his attention with the Challenger mechanic. We come to our turn. We're up to six mana, plus one in the bank from the spell mana. For those of you who don't know, any mana you don't use earlier in the game goes into the spell bank here. Spell bank can pay for spell cards. These sort of things here that say literally spell on them somewhere. Slow spell, for example. So creatures don't count as spells. Now, I could Brood Awakening, which would be pretty strong here. However, we can also shrink the front end of their team and make sure they can't block this turn. So I'm going to do that instead. We've pumped our front end and shrunk their back front front end. I hate the minus being over here. What the fuck's up with that? They do have one blocker. We played this. We can only have six minions at once. This was actually bad. It made a 1-1 one, one that now died. My bad. We also played them in the order where one of them didn't get buffed by the other one. That was also stupid. They've all got lure. So we can now pull this in to be attacking or blocking, should I say, the 2-2. Two, two. And choose not to let them block with anything else. And now they're dead? Yeah. As you can see, at least letting you choose who blocks. It's, pr it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And we're back into another game. It's King Skelle. And they're playing Trindamir Garen. They're playing Demacia Frail Lord. Show them that the vampire spiders don't give a shit about your Demacian Frail Lord build. We're going to put back our Arachnid Host. I think I'm going to put back my Frenzied Skidderer as well. I'll just try and get some lower CMC creatures here. Yeah. Black Spear kind of combos with the 2-1 because we can swing and then they block one half of the card. And then we can cleanly kill something most likely. Did you see me just <laughs> mulligan Frenzied Skidderer into Frenzied Skidderer? I am, I am a god among men. Okay, we have no turn one play. Neither of our opponents, we're both going to turn two. Storing one of that mana there in the spell pool. And they play a 2-1 for 2 that when it dies draws a card. It's good for us because it means they can't block this. Frustratingly, I didn't realise that I wasn't attacking. So I should have played. <laughs> I should have played this. But I didn't. So I'm not going to block my 3-2 evasive creature on their 2-1. Also, I say evasive. I'm not going to use the word evasive because there's a card, a mechanic called evasion. Um, or evasiveness or something like that. So I shouldn't really call it that. We're going to play our House Spider, which gives them an opportunity to play another blocker. I could just go to combat and attack the 3 2 that they couldn't block. I didn't expect them to play a 3 1. Also, a 3 1 that shoots our creature? Jesus. I'm going to trade in my Black Spear to kill this 3 1 so we can get some damage through. This might not be correct, but I want to, I want to keep this 3 2 alive and attacking. They will definitely trade their Avarosan Sentry for my 2 2, so I'm not going to bother sending that in. They'll get a card draw out of it and we'll lessen our board today. But remember what I said earlier, we're treating this like a... Oh, shit. Okay, they pump. They pumped it. Not great. Okay. Didn't expect them to have... What was that card called again? Radiant Strike. Ah. We have drawn Noxian Guillotine. They've played a 4-5 Elk. Jeez. I'm going to play a Frenzied Skitter, which shrinks the front end of that elk. Elnook, sorry. Can't get away from the elk, even in Legends of Runeterra. Hello there. 
It makes a great noise when it attacks. The art's uh, great in this as well. I do I do enjoy these full art vista things you can look at. This game's not going as well as the last one. I'm not gonna lie to you, my friends. So we're gonna play House Spider and see what other blocker they put out. And then we're gonna stun the biggest blocker and start trying to get in again. That's a Garen. Okay, I'm not gonna stun shit. I'm gonna go to combat. Hmm. Is that right? Do I wanna do that? I can knock in guillotine when they block with the Garen, but at the same time we're losing another body. Doesn't feel good. The timing bar. It's warning me. Okay, let's get in with this 1-1, one, one, this 2-2, two, two, and this 2-2. Two, two. This feels just awful, honestly. I kind of want to... Yeah, this just feels bad. But this Garen's off the table. The fact that Garen's a 5-5 five five that regenerates every turn makes him very difficult to deal with decks like mine. Sometimes you just gotta cut your losses and trade two cards for one. A one and a half card for one, I guess, because it was half of our uh, house spider. We're getting to the point where they're gonna cast a Trindomir, and that's gonna be a massive problem. This is a 3 3 that makes a, basically an overrun into hand. A six mana give all your allies plus two plus three. Now, coming from a magic background, six mana for this seems bad, but don't forget spells benefit from being able to bank mana into this mana pool here. So, wrath effects and overruns and similar are all overcosted because they can be played a lot earlier if you bank mana. Let's stun the 3 3. Yes. Stunned. Stun, stun by my beauty. They don't want to attack now, so they obviously see a combat trick coming up where I'm going to trade my one one in for this plus a spell. It's not kind of frustrating that they saw the line. Oh no, I couldn't trade a one one on this. I keep thinking this two mana spell is two damage. It's not. Two mana for like deal one damage, gain one life, make a one one is hopefully a reasonable rate. I think. We end our turn and bank some of our remaining mana. We have a lot of mana on our mana pool now. We've got seven to play with for creatures. And not only do we have eight mana with the creatures in hand. We're going to drain this elk. And then we can still play our arachnid host to pump our team. And we can culling strike this. Depends if they play another blocker after this resolves. There's another 3-3. Three, three. Now it's slightly less valuable because this is an elite. An elite's a creature type, basically like soldier almost. And some of their spells will pump elites. So we're going to choose to kill the three with a very shiny blade. Super shiny. They're casting a spell in response. Oh, single combat. Okay, sure. We lose a body out of that. So that's kind of frustrating. Single combat is basically just a fight. We've played our spider, pumped our team. And then we're going to move to combat and just crash in, I guess, and trade with their board. If we keep their board down, that for Damasia in their hand gets a lot worse. Getting with a 3 1 or 5 2 or 3 1 or 5 3. Where they attack on the board doesn't matter unless you have creatures that have the keyword support on them. Naturally, they're going to block the two biggest things, but they also drew Brittle Steel, which frostbites an enemy, so that means that it loses all its power, so it won't trade with a 3 3. Frustrating, but. I mean, they have a lot of mana up. We could expect some sort of trick, but we're. We're working on like finite resources here, so we have to keep swinging. Like, we can't really sit back on our laurels when they've got a Trindomir in their deck. For those of you who don't know, Tundermore is an 8-4 Trampler Overwhelmer. Like, when it dies, it comes back. Oh, speaking of, speak of the devil and he shall appear. And it comes back as a 9-9 Trampler when he dies. You've got to kill him twice. What a shit. Pretty good control finisher, I think. We're going to play this, pump our team. And now if we attack, we're going to lose two of our creatures. We'll take their Nexus to 10. We'll make a 6-6 six, six and then die to Trindamir. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. We actually have very few ways to deal with Trindomir. If we kill him now, he just comes back as a 9-9. But if we don't kill him now, we're taking like 7 damage. But if we do even kill him now with a 4-1, because of the Trample or Overwhelm, as it's called in this game, we're taking 6 anyway and going to 10. I think we're going to not block. Because I think we the only way we win this is by having bodies on the board. And I think sacrificing one body there didn't do anything. And I guess we just swing in now. They have uh, six cards in hand, so they have out-card advantaged us hard, and we never really got any momentum towards like punishing them like we did with the lease in the last game. They also managed to like disrupt some of our uh, our removal spells with their own removal spells. Now this game appears to be over, my friends. They still have more combat tricks. <laughs> 
They're miles ahead and have so many spells. Oof. Oh no. Battling Eye Strike's all battling enemies. Eight damage to make him deal his power to all these creatures. That's our Garen spin from League of Legends. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna click the surrender button. Good night, Mr. Tom. That went badly. Oh, we lost XP as well. Oh no, forever ones! Next up, we're against Snoop Dogg. Not to be confused with Snoop Dogg. They're in a uh, Darius Elise Vladimir deck. So similar to ours, but without a Darius. Uh, our opening hand has two drops in it. So yeah, I'm going to keep this. In comes our Poro. Cute little Poro boy. Oof, oof. All right, shitbag. Neither of us do anything on turn one. We're going to get in with our Fearful Spider. Hopefully this game will knock us guillotine them a lot better. Oof, and Elise. How are we killing that? I'm not sure. Well, we have one man in the bank. I guess we can glimpse beyond a creature and... Unsure. Next turn will be stunning it to stop it from attacking and making a 1-1, one, one, I believe. They can also kill our 3-2. If they kill our 3-2, then we go to stun it? They're going to just stun my 3-2 instead. Okay. So our 3-2 is stunned, so we can't block this 2-3 now. A 2-3 champion. So we're going to react in kind by stunning their 2-3 champion. If she is stunned, she won't be attacking. If they bring a 3-2 in, I guess we trade. They've got an elite, so them having a wide spider board is way scarier than us having it. Let's block. Hot arachnoid sentry on arachnoid sentry action. A sentence that I didn't think I'd utter when I woke up this morning. We drew this fresh offering, which I think is the worst card in our deck, really, honestly. But I've lost to Avalanche a couple of times, so I don't want to lose it too much. We're going to play a house spider, and then we're going to move to combat. This creature cannot block. It's an aggressive creature. It comes back every turn when it dies. With plus one, plus one, one eight for each time it dies, it grows and grows and grows. You want to avoid killing it. If they block our one, one here, we have the choice of killing Elise with Black Spear or Guillotine. They might see it coming. They might smell the removal, considering they're playing the same deck. Nope, they, they're they happy to block and kill my one, one. We do five, then take them to 12. And I'm going to spear that Elise. They have two mana open, but I don't know if, like, uh, Nox and uh, Shadow Isles has any real pump spells. So the colours do have certain effects that other colours don't. Buffs, I think, are more Damasian and Freljord. They're more to do with, like, being hardy or being part of the military. Nox is a militaristic race, but they're also all about attacking. Oh, we had a reconnect. Uh, let's try that again. That's the first time that's happened to me during the beta. It is launch day, after all. It's been a very smooth launch compared to everything else. Like, even patches with League or, or the Theros release on Arena was not as smooth as this. Elise is dead. I drink my tea. I've got a cup of tea here going cold. That's cold tea. I could do some lemon in cup. Draw another Black Spear. I like this card a lot. Dancing Pankster. Whenever another ally dies, deal one damage to any Nexus. It's kind of like an Aristocrats card. Like uh, the Celebrant from the recent guild's uh, Ravnica set. I'm going to make a lot of magic comparisons throughout my time playing any other card game. Um, we're just going to play an Arachnoid Host to make use of our mana. No reason not to, really. They're not going to be able to block this next turn, so having a 5-2 unblockable creature is pretty good. The attacks the 2-2 two, two that I don't think it's worth blocking. Damaging our creatures and then having it come back as a 3-3 three, three just doesn't seem worth. Interesting card design, if you ask me. Again, the, uh, the art in this game is pretty good. It's pretty good. Not quite the level of magic, but... We drew another fearsome threat. So. We've got enough mana. We're 6, 7 mana. We can actually play a fearsome threat. Or arachnoid horror, whatever you want to call it. We can also then glimpse from beyond killing that threat if we wanted to. To then be able to shadow spear something. If they play something that could block our other creatures. Let's play the threat. Darius. Ooh, boy. He's a chunky, thick lad. A chunky, thick. I think we're just going to slam in now. And then we can sack something that he, they block with the Darius if we want to shadow. We might want to shadow, uh, sack something and shadow spear after combat to kill the Darius, honestly. Or just shadow spear once one of our creatures dies. To there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. So we're going to eight them here. Oh, they have another spell. Give an ally plus three, plus zero. Okay, we'll lose a body here, which is a shame. Darius goes from being a 6 5 with trample to a 10 5 with trample when he transforms. He transforms when your next is less than uh, less than 10 health. Every hero has a signature spell that like other copies of the hero transform into when you have the hero on the battlefield. His is a 5 mana, 4 damage to enemy nexus. So yeah, he's like a, almost like an aggressive burn character. Like I said, Noxious isn't about the no Noxious Noxus. No no Noxus, what they call it? The Noxus? 
Noxus, yeah, they're they're aggressive. They're aggressive militaristic race. I guess that this this universe is Klingons to an extent. Okay, I let that all happen. And then I'm going to spear the Darius. I'm saving my guillotine for when we have like a maximum mana so we can go absolutely nuts. The irony being that Noxian guillotine is actually the ability of Darius. I should have used it there to see if there's a unique animation for, for that irony, but... Oh well. So we have a lethal threat on board currently. And we have... Don't really have a removal spell in hand. Because this can't really kill anything until we've injured it. So they're attacking for 2-2 that we're not going to block, and they're going to grasp for one dying, which gains them 3 life. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna sack this to stop that. There you go, there's a stack. Hearthstone, eat your fucking heart out. You couldn't do a stack like Magic could, but at least Runes, runes of Rune Terror? Leg, runes of Legend Terror. Legends of Rune Terror is trying. So this will resolve first. We'll draw two cards. Oh, oh no. Further stackage. Further stack. Oh, Jesus Christ on a bike. They're going to ping my thing. They're going to ping my... Jesus. Wept. Okay. We we lost our board, but we will recover. Mainly by playing all these things out. So we took two there. We're going to play a house spider. They're not going to do anything. We're going to play a harmless aristocrat. Where are you? Oh, I just realized it's called an aristocrat, and it's a card that would play an aristocrat. That is definitely a conscious decision from... Uh, the people designing this game. They haven't got a blocker. These two cards have to, these two cards have to be blockers. I'm going to summon three spiderlings because it makes us more likely to kill them because we're going to be attacking with six bodies. All of them buffed by plus one plus one on the front and except for the aristocrat because the aristocrat's not a spider. He starts out life as a non-creature type. He is not his 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 aristocrat nature. His aristocratic nature is not worth noting in the text box. Yep. There is no noble subtype here. Maybe they get updated in the future. Maybe all creatures get types eventually. Or maybe that would just be too complicated. Oh, I should pass priority. <laughs> I do that a lot. Sorry. Sorry, opponent. Okay. We now have a body... A body? A board full of bodies. Like, just under the floorboards of my house. And then we're going to put them into combat and slap our opponent's tits off, given the opportunity. This is where they've got Avalanche. Oh, not in Fairly Old, they haven't got Avalanche. So there is a there is one Shadow Isles spell or one of the ninja spells that does one damage to each opposing creature. That'd be bad here. Actually, that'd be genuinely awful. But what that would do is that would kill our board. And then we can play the five mana spider. And and Rune Terror has crashed. My mouse is moving, but the game is frozen. Oh. Uh <laughs> My recording's still going. Wow, how frustrating. Oh, a critical error has occurred. Uh, let's just uh, let you all see that. A critical error has occurred, must be terminated. Would you like to create a crash dump to add, aid the developers in troubleshooting this issue? This may take up to five minutes. Uh, no, I want to get back in. Oh. Oh. It crashes when you lose internet connection. Right. Fucking great. Thanks, BT. Ooh.